The European manufacturer of a popular emergency contraceptive pill has announced a change to its product labeling to indicate that their pills are not effective for women over 176 pounds. Arise News medical contributor Dr. Letha Maybank is here now with that and more medical news. Always welcome to Arise Studios. Thank you. Thanks so tell here. us more about this label warning change. So yes, this actually they found out by accident. Um, they were really looking and comparing different um, emergency contraceptive pills that were available on the market. And when they looked back at the data, they found that women who were obese were four times more likely to get pregnant after they took this particular medicine, not so much Plan B, which is what's here on the market in the United States, but the other drug that's on market over there in, uh, in Europe. They found that women who are obese were four times more likely to get pregnant than women who are not obese, meaning that the drug most likely is not working. So now they're considering in Europe to put labels on that if you are greater than 176 pounds, the drug is considered not effective. If it is greater, if you are greater than 165 pounds, it doesn't work so well. And so now the Food and Drug Administration here in the United States is looking at that evidence, looking at that research to see if right now if they want to make those same kind of changes to the labeling here, to the packaging that we have for emergency contraceptive. But there really aren't any more studies here in the United States. So they're still weighing the evidence to see what they want to do exactly. Exactly. But it, is, it has a, a significant implication here in the United States. If we have two-thirds of our women are either obese or overweight, and we know that about 11% of women have actually used emergency contraceptive. So we'll see what happens. It's, it's a very interesting finding, mm. uh, but a lot of people use it. It's, a, it's an emergency-type drug, so the, the conversation is, what do I do now if I can't use uh, Plan B or these other emergency contraceptives? I mean, like, like kids and with some adults, is it a question of dosage? or, or, or No, is it, it really is... seems weight. It, se mm -hmm. it seems, I mean, it, dose it compared to the weight, yes. Mm -hmm. So I think there's going to be a lot more to figure out to see how much a person will need to take in order for it to be effective. And is it going to have to be a dosage based on weight? We have yet to determine, or even body mass index, which is more specific to obesity and being overweight. So for a company marketing to um, the United States or marketing to um, us here, where those numbers you talked about, the number, of, a specific number of overweight women, is mm -hmm. it back to the drawing board for them, or do they? Yeah, I, yes, absolutely. It is back to the drawing board for many of these companies to kind of look to see what the level of this particular drug, levonorgestrel, which is a very important drug as far as preventing ovulation in women and, and delaying the, the amount of fertilization that happens. So we'll see what happens over oh, time. Okay, I guess down the road for women who do get pregnant, this is a new study for uh, women with teenage boys. There's an increase in the... Is it the diagnosis or the actual numbers of ADHD? It's actually, well, it's an increase from over the last decade, really, um, of both, both women, young girls, rather, and young boys with ADHD. About a 48% increase, which is tremendous, and those who are on medication, about a 26% increase on medication. And so what they feel really why this is happening is that more doctors are diagnosing it, parents are more aware of it. It's just more in the media. We've heard the conversation a lot about ADHD. You know, what we used to talk about, you know, prob problem children, or the, the, the child who's always they're just, just hyper. causing... They're just hyper. They're just hyper, and they're causing mm -hmm. ruckus in the classroom, that they're actually getting a, a, a diagnosis of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, the concern is, and, and the debate comes around, well, do we medicate more children? You know, because the, the data shows that about 70% of kids are not in treatment, or are we medicalizing um, our kids? Mm -hmm. And do we need to kind of give them the space and not just medical treatment or, and drugs, but do we need to give them mental health treatments and other treatments that help with behavioral issues? So that's the debate that's going on around this, but it is a significant increase that is happening among our children. When's the last study that there's been, since this has been sort of like a highbrow issue now for I'd say close to 20 years, um, that tracks both treating with medicine or treating with that managed care that you talk about? Well, I think there's more studies to go as far as to track that particular this particular study really assessed about 95,000 patients from across the country. The CDC Centers of Disease Control in Atlanta conducts a, a national survey on children's health every four years. So it's really a broad, comprehensive survey, very well respected and, and valid that you can really pay attention to. But I think as far as now looking at treatment models, um, what's going to be effective, what's useful, I think there's more work to be done in that particular area. Oh, okay. And uh, moving on to the uh, third segment here, which is about women and heart attacks. 
Yes, when I was in uh, training, and even, I mean, as recently as yesterday, before, before this study came out, you know, we really were taught that women presented with very different signs of heart attack. One of the key signs of heart attack is chest pain. We've all heard that, um, and, and we're very aware of that. But we were always taught that women potentially are presenting differently. Well, what this study, study shows is that women's chest pain is really very similar to men's chest pain. It's characterized, the quality is very similar. And so, Women, we know, are also dying faster from, or more likely to die from heart attack. And so what we're now finding is that maybe we're not assessing or diagnosing women at the time that we need to properly. Maybe we're ignoring, really, their chest pain and saying it's something else and not really going in to see if it's, if it's a heart attack and getting the proper study. So there's more uh, conversation on the medical side of the community to look at what are the practices that we're doing in order to help women. Dr. Letha Maybank, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks.